This is a, a bit of a video on my unboxing and review of the Hitbox HBM200 Mini Multifunction Welder. But I bought it really only for a, a little gasless MIG welder to do car body repairs, so I'm sure it will be ideal for that. Nevertheless, it says it still does arc welding, so stick welding, and as I said, gasless MIG welding, but it can also, if you've got the right torch, do lift TIG welding as well. And given it's got a 200 amp adjustable output, I should easily be able to turn it down to do car body panels, given that they're only about one or one and a half millimetres thick. It does say on this that uh, it'll be able to do up to 3.9 millimeters thick mild steel so i will give some thicker stuff uh, a go the thing is with car body panels they tend to warp if you overheat them so it's better to do small like, like spot welding and only do a little bit at a time anyway back to the unboxing mine came with an extra spool of flux cord wire get a little brush and slag hammer Right, earth clamp, that's a nice uh, sizeable one. And stick welding clamp handle, looks quite sturdy. It's got like a plug quick fit connector. Hitbox HPM 200 Instructions Quite a few pages of detail with some nice illustrations That seems quite readable Right, here's the MIG welding torch. Looks like you get some extra tips and an extra shroud. Seems quite sturdily made. Nice trigger handle. Seems fine that. And again a quick fit connector. Extra wire. Take the unit out, nicely padded. Importantly, it's got an English plug on it. It's a really nice size unit, this. The handle's in thick, strong plastic. I think it measures 330 millimetres long by about 150 millimetres by 160 millimetres high with a nicely painted metal cover looks like my switch is bust here or is it just the cover? I think it's just the cover it's got a waterproof cover on it and it just pushes back into place now that's note no problem quite nice really nice little switch Cables seem all quite sturdy. Nice front panel and just one single knob on it. And here's your attachments for your torch and earth clamp. Let's have a look and open it up. 
little finger sliding catch that works okay again it's all made of sort of uh, tough plastic where needed it's got metal bits such as the bearings and the feed tube little push fit spring holder knob for the uh, reel that seems fine it's even got instructions how to put the reel on I think on the inside of the panel again plastic hinges but they seem to be quite tough plastic seem okay and the handle's flexible it'll fold down nice finish not very heavy could easily put that into a car boot and take it with me now it's got a plastic protective cover on it here Um, I, th I think I'll keep that on. I'll only take it off when it gets really dirty. To attach the MIG torch you just line up the slots. Push it in and turn it to the right. It locks into place. Right, just do this extra connect connector now. Line up that again. It's only, it'll only go on one way. And then thread the little nut on. Tighten that home. Not quite sure what that's for. But somebody out there will know what that is. Right, now to the earth clamp. Again, it's just a question of lining up the slots. Push it in and then turn it to one side. And that's it. And only one knob to control it. Great. Right, just put some wire in now. If in doubt, read the instructions. Lift up the feed a bit. Untape my wire. Right. Where's the end bit of this? Oops. Oh dear. Um, right. It's all unwinding a little bit. Well, that's no good. I have to wind it up now. Bugger. Obviously, when you unfasten these, you've got to hold the wire, otherwise, it'll spring loose. There's my top tip for the day. Always keep hold of your flux cord spool wire. Now come to think of it, this is my first ever time of putting this on. No wonder I'm making a mess of it. I've done plenty of welding, but I've never actually changed the spool. So once you've got hold of the spool wire, I'll just clip the end so it's neat and straight. Take off the sprung knob. And washer. Shove it on the right way around with the wire coming out of the bottom in line with the feeder. Shove it in the oil and feed it into the other bit. Oh, I'll put my spring back on to hold the reel on. Always very important. Shove this in here and then it goes over the roller. And you guide it into the other tube. Once it's in, I can put my other bearing wheel down. Or is it feeding wheel or something? Clamp that up. 
the clamp is adjustable so it tightens or slackens the bearings on the wire so you can get the right tension all I've got to do now is turn it on and pull the trigger Feed the wire through all the way to the torch end. Obviously it'll take a little while. In this case it's two and a half metres. There we go, that'll do. Here's the display when you turn it on. Uh, obviously it's set at MIG at the moment. And it recognises the flux wire diameter 0.8 and it's just got this one button to scroll through the different settings looks like lift TIG and stick welding at the top and you adjust your ampage with your knob I'll put it on MIG and it recognises the flux wire obviously if it's a bit thicker flux wire that flux uh, one miller at the bottom and that's it I'll just dim the lights a little bit so you can see the display better. You can see it in daylight, it's just that the camera doesn't pick it up very well. I've had to put the camera on an odd setting to stop it flickering. But there you go, nice easily display. Turn the amps, goes all the way up to 200. And now if I turn it down... all the way down to 20 amps For car body panels you probably want it about 130 amps and anything above that for thicker metals. When you turn the power off the fan runs on a little bit. Presumably it's got a sensor in that recognises the temperature of the internals and runs on to protect it. So that's quite good. So I'll just try it out on some thick metal. These are two bits of something like 4mm and 3mm thick. I'll try it with the MIG torch which is not ideal given the thin wire which is more suited to body panels but it gives you an idea. And I've got it set at 160 to start with, see how that goes. I'll run it in real time, I won't speed it up, just to show you how the welder actually performs. So that took a while to lay down a bead, but it struck up easily and carried on nice and smoothly without any problems. And as I said, this is not ideal. It would be much better suited to stick welding where you've got a thicker electrode. But I'm just trying to push the welder to see what it'll do. I haven't really caught the edge here, but as you can see, there's not much penetration with these thick metals. They have stuck together. But I've got it set at 160 amps. I'll turn it up to 200. I did speed that one up this time. At 200 it's a lot better. But I haven't really penetrated into the lower piece of metal which is the 4mm thick. I actually think it's just my welding's a bit crap and I'm not getting into this seam correctly. I'll try butting the two pieces together. Now that's much better. As you can see it's run a bead down but there's not a great deal of penetration here with these thick pieces of metal but they have stuck together. I'm sure they'll be much better with slightly thinner metal. So with the same pieces of metal I'll use it on MMA, a stick welder. I should see a noticeable difference. I 
here's the result of that. There we go. Nice penetration. Running a nice smooth bead all the way down. Not the best of welds, but it just needs a bit of a adjusting on the current, which is a bit high on the first bit. The bottom bit where it's going a bit blue, that's a, a lower current, around 160. So that works well. And car body panels are about 0.8 to about 2 millimeters, so it shouldn't have a problem with that. And I think that's what these little mini welders are designed for, really, and just what I bought it for. On body panels, you just do a little bit at a time and build it up to keep the distortion to a minimum. And if you do that, it works well. This is the weld all painted up afterwards, a few months later. There's a panel put over the top of the original sill and joining into the seam, which I'm happy with. So I've no problem recommending this to anybody. It's a nice little welder for car body panels without the use of gas, and it doubles up as a good stick welder as well. But the MIG is the main thing on this, which is fine. And having that lift TIG function, if you get the handle, is great. And I'll get back to repairing my Skoda Fabia now, which is long overdue. And a big shout out for all my Fabia patient subscribers. I'm still snowed under with work, but I should be able to start producing more content in the near future. So keep watching this space. Videos might be sporadic, but I'll get there in the end. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.